In this Quiltler tutorial, I'm going to go over how to create designs using the patterns that are already included when you download the app. Additionally, we will use all of the basic functionalities to help you understand what you can accomplish with Quiltler 2. In part two of this tutorial, we'll teach you how to import your own photos from your camera or photo library and use those in your designs. To begin, I am going to select Create New Playground, and I am going to give this playground the name of June's Quilt. For the block width and the block height, I'm going to set that to be 2.5. And for the sake of the tutorial, I'll keep my quilt small. So for the quilt height and the quilt width, I'm going to set that to be 5 by 5. You can stagger your rows using the stagger slider if you'd like. And then select Create. If you get here and decide you don't like how the playground looks, you can swipe over to Edit Playground. And that takes you back to this page and you can edit it as needed and select update. And I personally like my toolbar to have two rows so that I can see more of the icons. So to change this, I am going to select the options icon at the top right. And next to toolbar rows, I'm going to change this from one to two and then click out of it. And to get this to format properly, I am going to select done at the top. And then I'm going to come back into June's quilt. And you can now see that my toolbar has two rows now. Additionally, if you want to change the order of the icons, you can long hold on an icon and drag it to where you'd like it. So I personally like my design center to be next to my multi-block. So I just long hold and drag it to where I'd like it to be. Next, if you have a large quilt and want to zoom in or out on your quilt, all you do is place two fingers on your quilt and pinch in or out. And this is nice if you're designing a large quilt and if you want to keep your quilt in place so it doesn't move around, you can select the grid lock. And to unlock it, you select the grid lock again. And now I'm going to zoom back out. And now I'm going to show you how to change the background color. Doing this doesn't change the actual color of the blocks. And this is useful if you're going to be designing a quilt that has a lot of white blocks. So it just changes the background color itself. So to do this, I'm going to select background color and I just want to change it from white to a light blue color and then select done. And I'm going to get going on designing my quilt. And to begin, I am going to select the single block and single block allows you to make one large block using several small blocks. So I am going to select four blocks within my quilt that I want my new block to be in. So from here, I am going to go into the design center and you can search for a certain shape or you can scroll through and that's what I'm going to do. And I'm looking for a windmill shape. So there's my windmill. And um, from here, you can rotate your block by selecting rotate and changing the degree any way that you need to. Also, you can flip it horizontally or vertically, and what that does is it mirrors the image. So for now, I am going to leave that off and I will select done. And if you want to change the color, you can select the color pattern well and choose what color you'd like. And I am currently choosing the color for the foreground. So I am going to choose a light pink color and then select done. And then I'm going to come back to my color well. And now I am going to choose the background color. And here, I just want this to be a nice peach color, a light orange. And then select done. At the bottom of the page, you can use the preview slider to see what the block looks like before you select done. Additionally, you can add this block to collection by selecting add to collection at the top and you can add it to an existing collection if you have any or you can add it to a new collection by selecting the plus button. And here, give your collection a name. I am going to give this the name of windmill and then select done. If you select the icon that has all of the four arrows, what that does is it gives it makes your block be all right angles um, if that applies to the shape you're using which doesn't apply to the shape I'm currently using 
So what I'm going to do is select edit and then just click on the ones that I don't want and then select done. And from here, you can also rotate the blocks. You can choose different colors or you can go back to the design center. But for now, I'm going to select back and then I'm going to select done. And from here, you can select block grouping and you can give these blocks a name. And I am going to give this block group the name of group A and select done and then done again. And now you can swipe over to block groups which is right here and swipe up to group A and then hit select. And that selects all of the blocks within the group, making it easy to edit all of those blocks if needed. I currently just have the one block, but you can have as many blocks as you would like to in a group. Um, next, I am going to show you how to select multiple blocks within a row by clicking on the grid. So at the top, I'm going to just click on the one and here you have the option to select every block in column one, select every other block in column one, or select every other block offset in column one. So I am going to choose that last option and show you what that looks like. And if you decide you don't like that, you can hit clear grid selection. And then from here, I am just going to use my multi-block and I'm going to choose several blocks within my quilt and I am going to go into the design center. And here I am going to select the small square and then I'm going to go to my color well and I am going to change that to my orange color. And then I am going to select done. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to change the background color and I, for the background color, I'm going to do that pink color. And next at the top, I am going to select masks and using masks is as if you're cutting out a shape into the fabric. So I am going to search for my windmill shape. And then I'm going to select done. And then here I'm going to add this shape to my collection by selecting add to collection at the top, clicking on my windmill collection, and then selecting add. And then I'm going to go back and then hit done. And Next, I'm going to show you how to use blocks in my collection. So what you do is you select blocks within your quilt that you want. Sorry, before that, you're going to select choose collection, select which collection you want to use, and then select done. And to use those blocks in your collection, you select where in your quilt you want them to be, select which block from your collection you want to use, and then select paste. And then next I'm going to show you how to copy and paste blocks. To do this, select copy, and then you can select either multi-block or single block, and then select where on the quilt you want your block to be copied to. Select which block from your collection you want to have copied, and then select paste. And if you decide you don't like how it looks, you can use the undo and redo icons. Next, I'm going to use multi-block again and select more blocks within my quilt. And I'm going to go into the design center and I'm going to select the square and then change the color to pink, the slight pink. And then I am going to select done. Then again, I'm going to select these same blocks using multi-block. Select. I'll go back into my design center. And then from here, I am going to choose the windmill. And I am going to change this color to my orange color. And then select done. I will show you what that looks like with the preview slider and then I'm going to select done. If you want to change the order of the blocks that we just created, you can swipe over to select layers. Then you can select which block on your quilt you'd like to change. Here, if you long hold on the three lines, you can change the order. So I will show you what that looks like with the preview slider. So now the pink block is over 
the orange pinwheel. So I'm going to change that back and I'll show you what that looks like again. So now the orange windmill is over the pink block and when that's how I want it. So I'm going to select done. And if you want to erase a block, you can select erase and then choose which block on the quilt you'd like to have erased. So you can select either one or both of them and then select done and then hit either redo or undo. And now let's say you forgot to add all of these blocks to a block group. What you can do is you can click on select blocks and then click on the blocks we just added. And then from here you can go into the design center. You can do group blocks, block grouping, give this block group a name. I'll give this name group B and then select done and then done again. And additionally, you can use the select block to change the color or the shape or anything that you need to change with that shape. And now I'm going to select done and all of those blocks are now in group B. And I'm going to go over splicing next. So next to the playground, I'm going to select the options icon and next to playground splicing, I am going to change it from 1x to 3x and I'm going to go back to my quilt and show you what that looks like. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Um, because I chose 3x, it made each individual block be three blocks by three blocks, meaning we now have nine blocks within the one block. This allows you to, des to design your quilt in more detail. It also allows you to add borders and sashing to your quilt design. And I am just going to use my multi-block and select a few blocks within my quilt. And then I am going to go into my design center, select windmill, scroll through to that, and I'll change the color to the light orange color, and then select done, and then select done again. And I am going to change that back to 1x. And then I'll come back here. And you can see I now have that little windmill right here and I was able to do that using splicing. Next, I'm gonna show you how to add stitching over your quilt. So I am going to swipe over and select edit stitching. And from here, I am going to search for stitching. And these are new, so you can choose any of these stitching designs. So for me, I am going to choose stitching four. And from here, you can come to the color wheel, you can change the color. For me, I'll actually make it just that light blue color. And then I will select done. And the stitching will always be on top of your quilt, so I will show you what that looks like. So if I zoom in, you can see that stitching design is placed over my quilt. And if you would like to hide the, the grid, you can swipe over to hide grid and that takes those lines away. And if you wanna see it again, you click the same thing to show the grid. And your quilt is always automatically saved, but you can select save playground by selecting the down arrow and select save playground and I'm going to go over how to export a playground file um, so you're going to select export playground file and then I'm going to scroll down to save to files and I have a file named playgrounds that I'm going to save that to so I select that and then I select save up at the top and from here I'm going to select done up at the top and now I'm going to show you how to import a file. And you would like to import one if somebody has sent you maybe a quilt that they have already done. And if you have that file and you wanna pull it up on the app itself, you can select the down arrow up at the top and you can select import a file. 
and from here I'm going to save the I'm going to click on the one that I just saved and select import now and from here I can select that and it brings up that same quilt and that is how you design a quilt using all of the basic functionalities in Quiltler 2.